This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hey, everyone. How's it going? All right. So uh, we have something different to do today. And rather than me flying solo and doing it, because I'm not... uh, I've never done one of these before. I figured, hey, why don't we bring in Jared to also do this with me? Um, Because I'm sure he'll have questions that I wouldn't have thought of. (laughs) Um, Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. So (laughs) uh, the old At Games 4K pinball, I uh, am going to be getting one of those cabinets. And since at the same time as they were doing the pre-sales, they were offering up special deals as At Games is wont to do. I was like, Mm. well, I might as well purchase some things that I know I'm going to be wanting in this, and that way I can get them at a discount, and I'm not having to wait. So Mm. I went ahead and... Save some dollar bucks. Right? (laughs) Yeah. It's a good Um, thing. You know, when when, when you're offering things at half off, that's hard to ignore. So... That's... Yeah, that's... (laughs) Let's just buy it, right? Yeah. That's, that's like, basically free, (laughs) really. (laughs) Well, I wouldn't call it that, but... um, (laughs) Yeah. So I ordered up the uh, surround sound feedback kit that is going to be designed specifically for the 4K pinball cabinet. Um, mm. This is a... I don't like doing blind purchases of that nature that haven't been mm. tested or shown when there's third-party ones that are doing exactly what I would want it to do. Um, mm. Mainly that it will work with the... Uh, what's it called? OTG? Is that what they're calling it? The, yeah, on the go. On the go. That's what that stands for. Um, yeah, when yeah, you're playing your games on the PC. Because apparently the previous uh, feedback of the ad games in their Legends HD uh, didn't function with the PC. Correct. Right. Mm. This is supposed to function with your PC. This is what I've heard. I think you're correct because yeah. the, the, the brand new board that they're using in 4k the one you can actually upgrade your old at games no you can't with. anymore they are not selling it oh they're taking it <laughs> off right so you've got to you got to buy the new one so there yes. was there was a time when pretty much the hardware that you're going to get in the 4k was an upgradable board but yeah they've gone no well that would mean you wouldn't have to buy a new cabinet so yeah let's get rid of that option <laughs> all right well the old one they they did some improvements to on the go um and it did work apparently but you're right you you will need this thing um and you know it's sort of like you, you could buy the third party one but if there's a first party one and it's just it'll just work tm um mm-hmm. that's that's worth the money i reckon like to well avoid the stuff around yeah and and the the third party one uh involved uh yeah their own cable system uh, disconnecting mm. the at games uh, feedback that was in there in replacement of, and then I figured also um, there's no way that Zen is not going to make it be compatible. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, it felt like a save. Anyway, so I bought that, but that is uh, that's not going to show up until the cabinet shows up uh, somewhere between December 25th and January 25th. Christmas, please. Um, yeah, that'd be nice. Right? The yeah. other thing that I ordered, though, is readily available because it's not any different than what they were already selling, and mm. that would be the arcade control stick that mounts on top right. and goes in place of the uh, the apron because, by all reports, the D-pad that comes on the standard machine is utter trash. <laughs> I've, I've heard that as well. In fact, I heard that a lot of people just rip it out and put a control stick in because the wires are, allow you to do that pretty much. Right. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to uh, unbox this thing. I've. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Let me uh, let me tilt my camera over yonder direction. Right there it is. Okay. Cool. We get Hopefully. to see a little bit more of Chris's house. <laughs> the the guitars that I don't know how to play. Uh. <laughs> Purely ornamental and decorative. Yes. All right, here. Let me uh, let me real quick switch to more closing up. Here we go. Razor blade out. So this um, arrived probably seven days after I ordered it. So nice seven and days. Timely. Okay. Yeah. Nice that's, and timely. That's pretty good. Didn't mind that at all. Mm. And I even appreciate that it's you know labeled on the outside. Actually, what? Yeah, it's it a, it's. 
nicely branded, eh? Like they've they put a bit of thought into the the the, the sort of experience you get with it. Right. Oh look, oh, there's I a there, I can see a protruding knob. Right, a protruding knob. Ooh. Take some foam out of here. Oh wow, that looks like really well packaged. All right, so we've like, got our hey tools required, and here's how you're going to connect it uh, instructions, which this will be good to know when you know time comes. <laughs> oh, they're nice. Look, they look pretty detailed. No, I mean that's you not... want to hold them up to the camera. That's uh oh yeah, pretty well laid out. That's uh, good. Backside it's is uh, in Espanol, I believe. Um, so Since yeah, you... that's that's. Decent instructions with lots of text that, uh, you know, it's not just a couple of random generic drawings just, that you've got to figure just, out for your own. Just, you know, instructions that say, just simply take the top of the play, top of the pinball machine apart and right. then put this on. It's easy. All right. Yeah. So, taken out of the foam here. And yeah, we're all. Gee, that's up. a lot of wires underneath there. That's a lot of what? A lot of wires underneath that thing. <laughs> like, there's a there's a fair bit going on. Ooh, all right, that's now, shiny. On the other wow, side that's... here, this is all just a plastic piece that you're obviously going to take off, but protecting yeah. everything, I imagine. Unless maybe you... I know, there's no way you would leave this on, right? No, you leave it on. It's it's Do a you? shield. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you'd, you'd leave that on. I'm sure yeah. of it. So USB port, it's, it's screwed on. right there. Here's your uh, connection wire, obviously, to plug in. Yeah. All right. Well, that's I, I like that that it's all shielded then and not shielded. just loose loose wires. Yeah. Because that would. No, be... that's good. Cause it's it's good because just in case something drops off, you know, it's only going to drop off into the um, uh, the the sort of plastic case. Right. Oh, well, you got a trackpad and everything there. So yeah, let's. Oh hey hey that actually that feels pretty good. Hmm. All right. And yeah, right. It's an eight. Golden T. Here we come. Eight... <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, but eight point joystick like that. Well, that sounds nice and clicky. Clicky. Got some spring to it. Nice. Good. And how the buttons the feel? Buttons. Standard buttons. Standard buttons. Flip not it over and let's have a look at the uh, guts of it it's not again so closely. Th the buttons are not... Well, you can see there's a slight concave. Hold on. Oh, uh, yeah. But it's, yeah, not, it's not like a deep indent. Yeah. Uh, which it's I not like the standard is... sort of MCA controls buttons that you would see on like 90s and early 2000 cabinets. Yeah. I can tell you right now, this top fingerprints like nobody's business already. <laughs> yeah. But it's glossy and it looks nice. So it's a yeah. showroom panel. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's a good point. You can see why they made a whole lot of these um, yeah. things not uh, glossy in the arcade because they didn't want to have yeah. fingerprints everywhere. Yeah. Hmm. I'm curious to know. I'm assuming people have swapped out the buttons. Well, let's flip it over and have a look. Place. Flip it over and have a look because if you hold it uh, horizontally so we can actually see the buttons underneath, it's a bit hard because of reflection, but... Yeah, you could take those off. They're just they're just standard um, yeah. uh, buttons. The only thing you might find is if you swap them out, you might have to lose the shield. Um, well, the shield unscrews. Yeah, so you can just take it off if you want. Yeah. If you if you want to, like you know, essentially, I'd say probably taking off the shield. If something happened with it, probably void your warranty. But I mean, that being said, buttons would mean... I don't necessarily want glowy buttons. Oh, no, I wouldn't want glowy buttons. That'd actually be distracting. Yeah, be distracting. In fact, you know, there's something to be said about the fact that they've got just black everything on the top. It's very inconspicuous. Yeah. So it sort of blends in. Um, so when you're actually playing the pinball game, it's it's not jumping out at you. Yeah. And I know that one of the things that people were uh, also saying why this is a must-have is for navigation purposes. Um, right. Because you can enjoy the key. These. Oh. And therefore be able to navigate through your various programs um, without having to have an external keyboard also to, to function with. Mm. Um, I'm that assuming good, the joypad it? would then act as a mouse. That would be nice. If you could mouse over to oh. something in the panel and then go, hey, select. I reckon that's exactly what that's for, eh? Yeah. Because if, if, the, if the way that on-the-go works has been improved in the 4K, having that 
as an option for mouse, that would be so good. Yes. Because you don't then you don't have to worry about it. and then it will just be like one of the one of the buttons would be the left and right mouse button. Right. right. So, so that's all, that's great. That's uh I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of impressed. It feels so thick... it feels solid, it doesn't feel chintzy and, and... Now has that got the that's actually got the, the light force feedback speakers built into it? Um it like does force have the force back feedback. Uh, force back feedback. Yes. <laughs> words, 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 words. Words, words, um, words. So difficult. The funny thing is, though, because I mean, if you have a look at all the stuff that's on that, yeah, like th there's not much room left in that little space to put things. Like they've jam packed everything in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That and the wood looks thick. Like it looks properly. Yeah, thick. that's a that's a proper uh, quarter inch. Um, actually, probably MDF. half inch. It's a half inch. Right, yeah, that's so. that's beefy. Yeah. yeah, you can slap that thing around and not have any problems at all. Yeah. So that's anyway, cool. that's the uh, that's the unboxing. How'd we do? <laughs> you know, it wasn't a multi it wasn't a multi camera feed. No. Uh, but you know, hey, look, we got to see it, which you know is pretty what? cool. I can I can live vicariously through you because down here in Australia, we're not seeing those. At Here's all. the deal. I, I've seen enough of uh, Adam Savage has tested to know that you only need one camera. Yeah. Now, That's granted, how the he's got his on right. a really nice bendy arm, and he can bend it any which way. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Fancy schmancy. <laughs> We're still able to see everything. Uh, I'll just say it now. When the uh, pinball cabinet does come out, no, I'm not going to be live building it. That's um, I don't have the setup for that, but I'll mm -hmm. be recording it. And uh, maybe we'll have something to do that way. I don't know. Jared, how's your editing skills? <laughs> mm. I'm just going to send you a whole bunch of uh, video files Rawls. and be like, here, make it work. <laughs> uh, right. So we're going to have like, you know, multiple camera feeds. You need what you need is one of those. Here's a funny thing. You need one of those rigs that you see in pinball events where they're doing live streaming of oh, table coverage. Or, yeah. I have one of those things that you can slide over right. a digital pinball machine <laughs> with <laughs> digital feeds. You'd think you'd be able to take feeds out of that and put it into a computer and just rip them directly. Yeah. But anyhow, yeah, that sounds like a, a step too far. Also, there's no way that I'm going to um, wait for us to have a podcast to crack open the thing. No, I'll be as soon as that <laughs> no. thing arrives on my porch, I'm cracking into it. So, yeah, um, that's <laughs> it's going to be tools and stuff everywhere. It's going to yeah. be crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there oh, you go. I, There's I the uh, unboxing of the uh, Legends Pinball Arcade Control from At Games. And uh, now I just got to wait to be able to try it out. Yeah. Until then, you can just you can just take it out of the box and go clicky, 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 clicky. <laughs> And that's your entertainment. Seconds of fun. Okay. So, now we have that out of the way. Mm-hmm. Jared, Hello, got... Chris. Uh, hi. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're probably going to parse that into its own little uh, thing. Uh, so I mm. want to uh, get that out of the way first on this uh, show. I know normally we do our, our banter. Cold um, open. I just did 10 days in a row of work. That wasn't fun. Oh, yeah. No, that doesn't sound like fun at all. You know, it's, it's what been... happens when they then they go, okay, you're going to work Tuesday through Saturday. And then they go, hey, next week's schedule, you're working Sunday through Thursday. You go, wait a second. Hang on a minute. <laughs> that ain't right. I was actually supposed to only work eight days in a row, but then they um, uh, they were like, hey, can we swap your your Wednesday off for Friday off, and then you can have two days off? And I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. But but the the fun thing with the, uh, the laws here, and I'm sure they're the same in your neck of the woods. Um, mm. That's two different weeks. You're still only working five days, so no extra OT, which bothers oh, me to no end. That's interesting. Because it's, right, okay. It probably, I don't know if it works like that here, but I think it's, uh, labor laws in the US are weird. If um, you were, if if we were getting paid at two-week increments, it would be different. Then that would be different. Yeah, then it would show up weekly. as that. But since we're only getting paid at one week increments, it doesn't show up that way. So. You can tell they did that for a reason, Chris. I know. I know. 
Anyway. It's not their first rodeo. The mouse knows yep. how things yep. work. So I was a bit, uh, yeah. a bit exhausted on that front. And since mm. we last got together, all which sorts was of... for the, it, that was the last time we got together was when they, um, geez, uh, they, their last content drop. Was yes. It? Oh no, it was Pimble M news. Yeah, it was just Pimble yeah. M news. Yeah, um, that's it. Since then, though. We've actually got the Pinball M demo. <laughs> yeah. I and, mean, that came out of nowhere. Right. And we've got the uh, South Park now is available in Pinball FX. Mm. So we're going to be taking a, a look at South Park uh, coming up here. Um, but mm. let's talk about Pinball M a little bit. Uh, yeah. That, it's, it, <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Mm. But as me yep. and Jared have been saying, this is a test bed if there ever was one. Oh, heck there's yeah. some like, test there's, bed stuff happening. <laughs> is it, in fact, there's there's so much stuff in there that this is really like you can almost like I'm looking at this going. This is the alpha channel now for all new things. Like yeah. they're going to be testing about in Pimble M, and then seeing what works. So, yeah. with that in mind. Make sure you get them feedback about what you like and what you don't, mm-hmm. because I mean they'll have the data, but data is one thing. It's like the actual people's feedback on it is the most important. Yeah. If you like things that you see in Pimble M, and you want to see them in Pimble FX, then be vocal about it, um, because that's exactly what they are doing here for sure. So let's talk about. Um... First impressions, now, again, this is just the demo, which means there's a lot of grayed out areas, and there's some functionality yes. that I'm clicking, but I don't think is working. Um, let's talk about the UI mm. a little bit. Uh, at the moment, my feeling is it's kind of clunky. Um, there's a lot of, oh, you push the button here, but you push the trigger trigger for this, and oh, you need your mouse in order to select that um, kind of thing happening. I haven't... I haven't found a, an instance where I've needed the mouse yet, but okay. I've 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 found that the once you understand that the the bumper buttons on your controller do one thing and the trigger buttons do another, then you get to understand how you move around the game. But mm-hmm. and the I must admit the um, the onboarding tutorial for this is is actually pretty good. Like yeah. if you follow that through all the way. It, it explains everything about what you need to do in the game. So I think they actually really did a good job with that. Um, but yeah, what what areas in the game did you find that you felt needed a mouse? Okay, so I was going into the challenges. Um, oh, yeah. And it was selecting your passive power-ups. There was no way of of D-padding over into them to select them. And then even once I selected one, it didn't show up in slot one or slot two. So I don't even know if it's functioning at the moment or if it's hmm. merely like more of a placeholder right now. Um, that was where I was having... I had to use the mouse in order to get into that and be able to click on uh, what power-up... Uh, passive power up I was going to want to want to use um, but like I said I, right. it doesn't seem to be functioning right now either so I don't entirely know um, I was able to select power ups for obviously um, Elder Gods yes um, and I I observed that you it's a little bit it is clunky that part because they they over they're really struggle like they, they're running out of inputs that you can use um, <laughs> to select things but um it was a it was a button press like y or something like that that when you're on the challenger screen if you press y then you can go into configuring your power-ups uh your your different modifiers so it's a little bit the same as like fx when you're in the um arcade mode and you want to adjust your powers you you go Y on the controller, and then it, it focuses that area where you can change things. So I didn't have any problems changing things around it. I think. literally um, could not scroll, you know, uh, on the left-hand column, bop, 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 bop. Mm. Um, it had, you know, your challenges or whatever, and there was n- and the power-ups box was there in the middle of the screen, and I had no way of 
getting over into it. Hmm. Um, that's what I had to use uh, mouse for. And then once okay. I selected my power up, I expected, you know, I push and it would go slot one and I push another one and it'd go slot two. Never showed mm. up in either slot. It just told me what that power up was. Okay. Yeah, well, there must be, maybe there's something going on there um, and they're going to be patching it. Or maybe I got onto it after they patched that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, know. Or maybe I'm just hallucinating and I haven't actually played with powers. And I just, <laughs> I liked what I saw. So therefore I just stuck with what I had. Well, and I definitely um, so had no be... way of activating the uh, active power up. Um, for that oh, matter, I don't okay. think I'd actually earned one yet. Um, I haven't, uh, Jared. You actually earned everything that you could earn, correct? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Well, I'm at the maximum rank, which is five in the demo, and I've gone and unlocked most of the stuff that I can unlock with the tokens. So we should probably there, talk about the tokens thing sure. because. Um, that I saw on Twitter when they said, oh, look, we have these, you know, um, uh, there was another one. Actually, it wasn't related to Pimble. It was the, um, the new thing that we're going to be discussing shortly. Um, but yeah, the tokens in the game, they're non-purchasable. You got to earn them. Um, they're basically like the, the unlocks, uh, in, uh, the Williams Pimble app. Yeah. Um, but you, you don't have to pay, you just earn them in game. Uh, the more you play, so it's a it's it's I guess it's just a way of trickle feeding um, the unlocks that you would normally have access to in pinball effects. Well, that's um, different, so from, that you come back and play. Yeah, it's different from doing achievements. Um, yeah, and obviously it allows you that custom customization where uh, mm. you're selecting what you want to unlock and how you want to use it. You know, do you want to use it to decorate your your corner? Or did you want to, you know, put new flippers in the machine? Or, you know, what is it that you want to do, basically? Mm. Um, all right. So there's the other clunky aspect. <laughs> the corners. Um, mm. Sometimes I just wanted to get back to the corner. Uh, when I when we say corner, so you think about your pinball t- machines in your room, right? And there's basically a two-wall mm. corner that is decorated accordingly yep. to the theme of that table. Um, and you yep. can, with these tokens, you can get different lighting, different skins for the machine, uh, all sorts of different, you know, flip, actually, different no, atmosphere yeah. that's you know around your machine. Um, I know people yeah. got excited about lighting. No, that's lighting that's lighting your room, the machine. It's not changing the lighting of the table itself when you're playing. Um, but sometimes I just want to get back to that, and instead it would kick me back to the main scroll of mm. the various tables, and then I'd have to click it again to get into that and then be able to do... This is where I'm saying the UI, I, I, I felt like I was fighting it a lot. Um, the, I will say it that, wasn't yes. Doing natural, uh, it wasn't doing natural progressions or regressions, I should more actually say. It is very easy to jump out of the corner and then back to the table carousel. Um, so... Uh, yeah, that is that is a clunky aspect of it, um, but I think the uh, the the two ribbon thing is the cause of the problem there. Like it's it's really like getting it to go backwards and forwards with your two shoulder buttons like that is is mm-hmm. the, the the real sort of mechanic that's that's overloading the interface. I think at the moment, but there's no there's no other way of them doing that unless they actually have a sub ribbon menu. So you go into the table and then the top ribbon then becomes the, the main ribbon. So it's sort of like snaps into view for the top and then you're navigating with that sort of ribbon at the top um, instead of having two ribbons that you're dealing with. And then there's like a jump back out one level if you want to um, get to the, the main menu level sort of thing. A little yeah. bit like in how pimple effects is when you're, navigating to your table, you select your table, and then you have the options for like all the different modes. It presented in like a box out um, next to your table. What they've done is they're, they're experimenting with a different way of doing that box out and accessing the special modes. So that's because they're adding extra modes into it, like the 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 table decoration, not the table decoration, the, the corner decoration mode, and there's lots of extra challenge modes that are pinball in specific. 
they've thought, I think, their thought process as well. Let's see if we can just give people more ready access to select that without having to go into another menu. Um, the, the thing that's going to be interesting here, and it will come to pass whether we work out they're going to have a cabinet version available for this, is this requires the shoulder buttons, right? <laughs> the shoulder buttons that. and the triggers. So they are backing themselves into a bit of a tight corner here if they are going down the path of, hey, let's not actually have shoulder buttons that uh, like separate from the um, uh, the trigger buttons here. So let's hope that Pimble M, A, gets a cabinet mode because I think it would look really cool in cabinet, but B, also prompts them to separate the triggers and the bumpers and finally get us to yeah. back to parity with what Pimble FX has. Oh, sorry, FX3 has. F they had it there. Oh, did they, oh no, hang yeah. on. They didn't have an no, FX3. No, you're thinking so. Pimble Arcade. I am thinking of Pimble Arcade, yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's that's what we need, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So there's kind of uh, brief thoughts about the uh, just the UI in general. Um, what do you think about the idea of having these different uh, rooms that are thematically related to the table? I really like that. I, I like how the the rooms feel different um, when you're in them. Uh, yeah, I, I love that aspect. I think that's um, that's really great. I do think it's a good way of um, separating them out from the you know the next table over kind of thing. I also think that it will be good for if you're in cabinet mode that. When you're just doing the menu select, you get that sense of atmosphere that's going to be. But then when you get into cabinet mode, you know, all that stuff that's usually on the side of the table is not there for cabinet. So you're not getting any of that ambience. Yeah. So it's a good way of actually having that ambience present in some form. Um, again, we go back to Star Wars VR <laughs> and what, everything that we liked about that. This is what this feels yep. like to me. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, it has got, like, I think... You're right. Your comments about how this would work in cabinet mode feels right. Like they would actually, you'd have the atmosphere while you're in table select mode. And then when you're in the actual table experience itself, it's it's just devoid of any sort of environment. Yeah. Um, so that would work quite well, um, I think. Uh, so I think the, the overall sort of theming of Pimble M is is good i like the way that they've done it um i think that they they might have to rethink certain that they, they'll need to rethink the um the navigation the controller navigation uh if they decide to do cabinet mode although at the moment you could pretty much assume that given the fact that you need triggers there isn't going to be a cabinet mode for this that's that's sort of the impression I'm getting about Pinball M at the moment, uh, which is going to be interesting to see what the community think about that, uh, because I think they'll want cabinet mode for this if they if they've got a cabinet. Um, but at the moment, the control scheme you would need to use is like a an Xbox controller to actually navigate at the moment, which I don't think right. Pinball cabinet owners want. No, but hey, I've got this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, you know, you've got problem solved. you've got all you need. You, you problem solved. That's right. Um, that's right. And you right. know, that is a good point, right? Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the fully playable demo, which is Wrath of the Elder Gods. You can play that to your heart's content, full game. Um, all the content available doesn't time out on you. Uh, so it's your best yeah. way of actually. Uh, getting a true sense of what they were going for here. And I got to say, I I went back and forth between the two versions, Pinball M and the FX uh, version of Wrath of the Elder Gods. And a mm. lot of those complaints that we had are just like gone with Pinball M. The main one being that just ridiculous music. It's not yeah. present. You can hear it that... try and start up right at the beginning, and then you don't hear it at all ever mm. after that. Yeah. And it's like, yep. when I say you hear it's it start great. up, like you can hear the first couple of notes and then it's gone. 
Yeah. It's just like, nope, they've changed the James radio station. Yeah, it's, it's great. I love yeah. not having to hear that music. Yeah. Um, and then the theming all around, uh, it just, it definitely, I, at first I thought, oh, they're just slapping a couple of coats of paint on here, you know, in terms of, you know, the blood or, or whatever. But it makes so much more sense now. You mean, you just even, you know, at the slingshots, now there's skulls on top instead of uh, investigatory <laughs> items or whatever. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. the the maw, when it's spinning and eats your pinball and starts spraying blood, it makes sense. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think there's there's blood and gore in that table, not just for shock value or the fact, no. oh, it's M, we have to put blood in it. There's actually like a reason for the blood and reason for, you know, when you shoot the rants, there's like pus flies out of the, the, the thing, you know, when the ball goes through it and stuff like that. You know, that's... And the, and the- it's kind of what, what you expect. That's it. You, tell you when, when you shoot the ball up the ramp and it goes into the big beastie up on top and it goes into the beastie a little bit of the lug, when you play it without yeah. that, it's kind of like, where'd my ball go? <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it, it's subtle and it makes me wonder what came first. Did they go full uh-huh. tilt and then we're told, okay, we got to back off. And so then they backed it off. Or is it... That they were like, "Hey, this would be a good table to slap something on." In a lot of ways, I feel like they backed off for the FX version. Um, that'll be a question we're going to have to ask. That would be an interesting one to ask. Um, how they did they have to sacrifice up front, or did they take feedback and go forth with it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, but all I can say is. Uh, if I'm going to play Wrath of the Elder Gods, this is the version I'm going to play. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm I'm not touching the other one anymore. It's it's like dead to me, really. <laughs> yeah. um, now they did drop the uh, playable demos of uh, some other tables, so now you can actually play mm. uh, Duke Nukem and Child's Play and Dead by Daylight. Am I missing anything? Yep. No, it's just those, right? Yeah, those are the three. Yeah. Chucky was added uh, oh, yeah. like uh, not long ago. Yeah. Um, of those, mm. the one that has me excited is actually Chucky. And the reason why I say that, because they put in full motion video from the movies in the DMD. And I was like, yeah. that's the closest we've seen them come to doing what Stern and Jersey Jack have been doing. Uh, and it's up there and it looks flawless. And looks exactly like what you would expect a modern pin to do. Um, yep. So I think that's fantastic. And then Chucky was also the first one that, as I was playing it, I went, "Oh, f bombs." <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you don't frack with the Chuck. No. <laughs> do you? <laughs> no. So yeah. um, that confirmed what we suspected was going to be happening. Um, mm. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. Um, I di- it's Look, it's impossible for me to judge gameplay off of a two-minute demo. Um, yeah. I can I, barely I have time to start a mode. <laughs> I got into the marbles mode. That was fun. The witch mode? Um, the marbles mode where you get like a whole lot of marbles coming onto the table. It's like a multi-ball. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's fun to sort of play around with. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it. I think that one is the newest table. And I think, obviously, this is a demo. You can expect things to be weird. Definitely yeah. when those marbles came onto the play field, there was a noticeable frame drop mm. when it happened. And then it sort of stabilized a bit. So... Clearly, they're still working on performance with that. It's to yeah. be expected. It's a demo. No problems. They'll they'll fix it by the time it comes out properly. Uh, and then there's Duke Nukem, which mm. <laughs> that one has very much a retro vibe to it. Oh, it does. Um, it's so on theme. Like the, even the MIDI sounding music from the from the actual game is in there. It is like basically playing a pinball version of Duke Nukem back in the nineties. It's great. Yeah. The uh the the voiceover artist that they have sounds a lot like the guy that does the um 
Oh, what's the channel that does the uh, the the trailer reviews? I don't know. I don't he know. sounds like the Duke in the game, though. Well, yeah, and I mean, definitely that. But I don't know. There was something about it that just made me uh, made me laugh um, about the voice because it very much matches up with on YouTube. There's a uh, there's a site that does they review the trailers basically or review the movies in six minutes. It's really kind of fun. Um, oh, right. Slam the movie or repraise the movie. It's either or. Um, but it kind of has the same kind of voice. But anyway, uh, right, right. there's an interesting mode that I did activate, and that I have no clue how I did it, but where the whole screen turns into a Duke Nukem shooter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like a video out. mode. Yeah. yeah. Um, some terrible aiming cool. going on, but... <laughs> yeah, you got to get used to the, how that works. It is it is a bit of a... Well, it's the weirdest thing. It, it's... You, you swing your... You know, you're like, all of a sudden an enemy will pop up. And you swing by using the flipper. You swing your gun mm. over to them. And it looks like it's lined up, and you fire, and it misses. And so then I tapped away and moved, and then I would hit. Or you just tap a second time on the trigger, and then it'll hit him. And I'm like, wait, so you're always wasting one bullet. Okay, interesting. <laughs> oh, I didn't find That's that. That's what I no. found on mine. Okay. Maybe there's there's different shooting modes, too. So there, a lot of the modes in the game have this sort of, like, pseudo video mode um type of experience in it um and it's it's and the thing is it looks like part of the game it's not like a oh we're doing a video mode now it actually feels like that the theme of the table is carried through to the actual scene that you're in yeah um so it's from that perspective it's well integrated yeah um but i think i don't know maybe my i don't know why my experience was different to yours but i found that oh yeah the thing that I did find though is that there's enemies off screen that will shoot you and you don't mm -hmm. know they're there because the viewport is too narrow and you yeah. don't see the entire scene. So you, you sort of have to be sort of like looking around basically left and right to see if you can find the enemy, which yeah. is a bit of a, an interesting mechanic that I'll have to get used to. But yeah. Um, and then there was Dead by Daylight, a game I have no clue about. Uh, mm. You do select uh, a character at the beginning, and that basically yeah. is what help is call it a passive power up, because <laughs> um, that does affect what happens within uh, the story of the game. Um, but mm. again, I didn't really mess with that much because it just didn't grab me right off the bat. Not in those two minutes. No, I, I played the the red mode, so the pursuer or whatever it's called. Yeah, um, I just. That's the weakest out of all the tables. Based on the demo, it's the mm. weakest out of all the tables. Um, I think it's a toss-up between Duke and Chucky for me. I don't really have an affinity with Chucky because that's not really a horror series that I paid much attention to. Yeah. Um, but Duke, I definitely did. Like, I, I played that. So that has more appeal to me because I sort of know some of the subject matter a bit. Um, not, I mean, saying that, I think... Chucky is probably the better table out of the two. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I think the shot selection is more interesting on on Chucky than it is on Duke. Yeah, that's right. I just don't really understand much of the theme and the the nods to the game. Like, what is the marbles thing where you break the marble mm. glass and stuff like that? You know, don't know what that means, but obviously that's important in the movie. Um, so you know, uh, maybe I'm going to have to go and watch a bit of Chucky <laughs> and have a look at some of those. I like truth um, be told, I think I've only ever seen the first one. I don't think I've seen anything beyond it. So, right. There, uh, how many movies are there? Do you know? Oh, I have lots. No well, I know that there was a Child's Play two, and then I know that there mm. was Bride of Chucky, and I think that yeah, there was right. a Chucky after that, and then they tried doing a reboot with a hideous looking doll that everybody just went no to. Nope. So... <laughs> nope. Nope. Do not want. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So what yeah. what is interesting though with Pinball M, I think now that we know that uh, language is not an issue, now that we've seen full motion video be able to be in this, um, them trying out various, uh, you know, like the tokens, ways of earning, yeah, uh, that goes beyond just achievements. Um, I, I'm very curious to see what else they wind up throwing in here. Um, and yeah, I don't know what else they could fit in there, but because um, it would be a shame to isolate something like Elvira into this, 
Um, they won't because Elvira is an original and they've confirmed it's only Zen originals going into here. Like, uh, sorry, okay. Elvira is a, like a, a recreation or a, a recreation. Yeah. So it's only Zen original licenses going into this. But thing. on the other hand, if you ever got a table and I'm just throwing this out there, if they went with Stern and if they had a Metallica, mm. Well, then I want the option to be able to listen to the alternate audio. And this would be where mm. I would hope it got, you know, that they would dump it into. Um, they That would be the only place at the moment that they could put yeah. that in. Yeah. Um, I think they could probably get away with Elvira, even Scared Stiff. Oh, I'm sure they could get away with it. Pinball effects. Because it's, it's innuendo, but it's yes. actually not swearing. Um, and as so I, and we argued this a very long time ago, it's no worse than medieval madness, and it's in you. No way. So no, no, it's it's well, fine. I mean, the fine. only thing that could be that they had to do in Pinball Arcade was you know spider web the boobs, um, but <laughs> I think their ranking, their rating in um, this would allow them just to have everything as is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that should be fine. So anyway, uh, Pinball M, the demo, it's out now, free for download. So if you haven't yet, please go download it, check it out, give it a whirl. Um, and uh, it's worth checking out. Yeah, by all means. I don't think it's it's not it's not half baked from what I can tell. It, it's looking like no, it's a pretty solid demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, moving on to the other thing that you can go and play right now. So, hooray, South Park has uh, made its triumphant return back into Pinball FX. Uh, last time it was available in Pinball FX 2. Now we're skipped Pinball FX 3, and now we're here we are back in Pinball FX. Um, the big question, what has changed? And I'm going to tell you right now, nothing major. It's subtleties but mm. in terms of physics the ball no longer feels like it's on ice lid yeah and, oh, and well, yeah ice. not only is it not on ice which is like moving at the speed of light sometimes but the lead ball now it has proper bounce um mm. for what it should be um i i was going back and forth between the two and comparing to seeing what i noticed and uh, it just feels better in pinball effects. There's no two yeah. ways about it as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy about that because if it was just a straight up port, that would suck. That would, yeah, that that's would right. be totally the, well, why did you waste your money on it kind of thing. Um, that's right. But no, there's, there's differences. Uh, uh, did you notice a difference in the, the, like the attract mode audio? Like the the music, I didn't pay like attention. You, no, should I have? I maybe I'm just hallucinating here because it's been a long time since I I watched this. It sounds like they have updated the music. Um, Wouldn't the, surprise me. Yeah, so like there's is it, there's is it new the actual music. South Park music? Yeah, or it's a it's a version of it. Because I think cause, they might have actually recomposed it. Well, because. <laughs> Music is fun. Here, let's talk licensing, folks. Our favorite subject. Um, mm -hmm. I know that for TV shows, they are constantly, like every couple of years, they actually have to redo their theme songs. Um, oh, they have to. It's kind of a. Uh, it's kind of in the contract. Um, oh, really? Because of because of copyright issues or, or whatever, um, music publishing rights, they they update them. So South Park has up. If you watch season one and listen to what the theme song sounds then compared to now, they're wildly different. <laughs> um, and that's what I noticed in this game. Like, yeah. I know the original one, the original Primus um, mm -hmm. sort of theme song, which is you know. Uh, I think that's even features in the Stern South Park. Yes. Um, but yeah, this this has the new because I watched the uh, what was it the Streaming Wars South Park mm -hmm. movie and it mm -hmm. had the, this new audio. And I went, oh, okay. When I heard it, I went, yeah, that's they've changed it. Yeah, um, and even if you look at the the copyrights uh, when it comes up to play in FX2, it's copyright 2017. This one's copyright 2023. 
So copyrights have been updated, and I imagine that the music licensing they went with the current music license. Um, yep. Probably that, would have been just, part of the deal. And they were renegotiating yeah. it. Yeah. Because they would have said, well, we want current, current. We'll just basically put a little bit of spit and polish on it. Well, know, I don't even know if it would they're... necessarily be, be Zen saying we want it current more than this is what the current music license is. This is how much this costs. If you really want to go back and try and hammer out a deal for the old one, it might actually cost you more. <laughs> yeah. So, so here it is. Take yeah. it. Or take, don't. take what we currently have lawyers for. Um, yeah. Then, you know. And honestly, it's it's better. Like it actually, it's when I heard, I went, oh, it's like a slight modernization for the, the table. It's like yeah. I've got the new music. I'm okay with it. You yeah. know. Um, so I did go and uh, do some screen comparison. And we're going to take a look at those mm. right now. So I think there's some interesting things uh, to point out on this. Oh, I do want to point out this too. Uh, when you boot the table up, cabinet art is just the generic pinball effects. Except I just right. saw a post that apparently on Switch, they have full cabinet art. So I guess oh, okay. we can expect that to be coming? <laughs> yeah. It's weird that... This is the weirdness about, you know, the Switch releases, the console releases, the Steam releases. There, there's very... They're, diff, they're all different. Yeah, like, and you can expect the the switch release to be wildly different because it's got to be like toned down for the ancient Tegra chip that's in the right. Nintendo Switch. But as far as the art and stuff goes, why are they different? Like I don't know. They're obviously running in a different like if you had a look at the Gantt chart for mm -hmm. the way they're releasing everything, they'd be like conflicting lines like this basically. <laughs> as they're going down the list for when they're releasing stuff and what point they need to get the game to so it will meet submission and stuff. Yeah. So I, I pretty much guarantee you there's, there's like, there, I would not like to see their Gantt chart at the moment for yeah. how they're releasing these things. It will be pretty busy. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at, there we go. We're going to take a look at South Park first. Uh, get that ready to go. There we go. Um, okay, right. so... Here we go with uh, South Park that is in uh, Pinball FX. Um, so this thing, is the latest? This is the latest version, yeah. I really wish my menu of pictures would dip away, but oh well. <laughs> you can't really see anything in here. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I'm going to point out, check out uh, the Habit Trail by Chef. You can see Shadow from underneath there. Oh, um, yeah. Same thing with uh, by Man Bear Pig. Um, yep. Also, check out all the characters below the flipper and uh, below the inlane. Looks like they have glowing eyes, which I think it's kind of yeah, weird. Yeah, they do. I'm not sure what the deal with that is, if it's if that's supposed to be lights or not, <laughs> or if that's just what it is. Um, and then check out up by the skill shot toilet, the red flasher light that's on that by the organ yeah okay take a look at that also and then i'm going to switch here to the fx2 version well that's dark so the fx2 version is a little bit darker obviously we can see that check out the lighting down in the in lanes so the gi lighting yeah. from underneath the slingshots as opposed to here so it's like kind of like bah, lighting and here it's a little more subtle, a little more integrated. But I do Look find the colors it... though, like on the the text that's below the outline, it's blue. It's like it's blue on that one. It's green on that. Oh, the like, green that the left, is the copy. That's the new South Park copyright. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's the that's the copyright logos and stuff like that. Um, but so here, yeah. Look, I go back here. Now the kids' eyes aren't glowing. That are below the apron. Um, yeah. Obviously, that flasher is not as good looking. There's not really any shadow that you can see from the habit trails. Um, yeah. But the characters here, the skin tones are correct and they look good. Mm. Here, they're a little bit blown out. The whole table looks like it's it's a little blown it's out. Got an isn't overhead it? spotlight on it, like it yeah. looks like there's like a really, really strong light over the top yeah and then look at the uh, school bus this is again we're looking at fx version right now mm -hmm. and then there's fx2 I, truth be told i like the school bus better in the fx2 that looks like a three-dimensional 
thing. It's got light and it's got shadow to it and it's yeah. got dimension to it. Here yeah. it's just kind of... It just looks like a big yellow blob. Again, I, I, it almost feels like the lighting is too much, mm. too bright here. Um, and if you take a look at the left out. slingshot, the, the left slingshot lighting, but because it's so much brighter, it looks it looks baked in. It doesn't look dynamic. Like just mm. from that screenshot, yeah. Like it look, it doesn't have that natural feel to it. It looks yeah, like if you just look that's at the panda. actually being painted on. Yeah, because you like look at the, the panda, the, and then there the panda looks great. Yeah. Or Clyde Frog. Clyde Frog looks a lot better there. So yeah, I find the FX2 version actually somewhat looks better. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly enough, um, I wish this was the FX3 in terms of lighting. Um. But I do appreciate the shadow that's on this one. Um, I think the shadows are a little bit better. I also will say that in motion and play with the lighting going on, this is easier on the eyes than this one. This one, mm. everything felt uh, digital in terms of it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. This FX version feels like it's got the, the fade more. Um, yeah, that's true. The lighting is way better in this. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, I guess you'd say the lighting effects are better. The actual lighting of the table, I prefer the FX2 version. Um, mm. And again, I, it just feels like this is washed out. The FX version, it feels like it's a little bit, a little bit too washed out. Um, like they got to just, they got to change their uh, their brightness uh, or the white yeah. balance. I'm not, I'm not sure what, but. Anyway, um, now we're looking at the South Park table. Can we agree that this is the worst of the two? <laughs> as far as just the presentation, gameplay, game itself. Oh, it's a spellorama. I hate it. Yeah, I and, like, and it's, it is a hard spellorama. It it's spellorama. There is no mission hole. Um, it's just a lot of different storylines happening at the same time kind of thing. It's like really, you're hearing things about man, bear, pig, and then all of a sudden you like Stan and he wants to kiss and you're like, I don't know what to do. And everything is just blinking. Um, yeah, it's like, because okay. that's the thing with the Spellorama, right? Like every time you shoot one of the holes, it unravels a little bit more of the dialogue yeah. um, that's in the game. So it's almost like if you want to not have it like a chaotic mess, you really just need to tug at one hole at a time and get it yeah. done. Yeah. And if I hear cheesy poops one more time, I tell you what, <laughs> that thing is like that. In other words, target Jared doesn't school. like cheesy poops. <laughs> <laughs> they are lame. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, so I, I also tried. I hope you noticed that I tried to light an in lane or some of those lanes to see what the lights look like, um, just to compare to here. There's really not much difference. It, it doesn't have really. that. It doesn't have that something's glowing from underneath look. It sure. has instead that, okay, we have the off version, and here's just the letter on top. That's right. You know? We've colored in the letter. Yeah. yeah it's not glowing. It doesn't no. have any, um, like a lot of the, the lights from the other tables, they have like a, a bloom to it. Yeah. There's no bloom on this. No. They just, it, they are very much, almost like the, the lights and everything, they are very much in the same vein as the cartoon in yes. that there's no there's no extra sort of effects on them. Something I else I wish they had taken an opportunity to do. All these characters on the table, I shouldn't say all of them, but most of them have a mode. And I wish yeah. that they had done a little bit of Monster Bash here and that all the characters would be, you can light them. So you have a sense of progression uh, through the table. Um, yeah, I think that, that would, would be also good. help with uh, the visual distractions. Um, and I, I'm thinking kind of like, I mean, 8-Ball Deluxe, it's a whole bunch of pools, pool balls that would light. All these heads are basically pool balls. Just light the heads, you know? Um, yeah, or something. I'm kind of disappointed that there was no nothing altered in that respect because I think that's a missed opportunity. Yeah. Um, so, Here's all right. It. Let's move on to the the better table. Butters. So, this that's is me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh Pinball FX2 
version of Butters. Yeah. And this is the FX3 version of Butters. So this one, oh. the FX3 version, is darker. Is darker than the FX2. Right. Which is what I would, ex- which is what I expected all along, <laughs> of yeah. South Park, but it kind of went the opposite direction. Um, so, all right, so things they're going to point out that are different. Again, the shadows are all there on this one. Um, notice the spotlights above Butters on the left hand side. There ain't no spotlights on this one. Yeah, true. Um, also, it looks like the in the spinner room. Um, the, there's a little bit of they, they almost already the the stand up targets, um, they do light up. This one has a little bit of a shine on it. This one no, the chrome in general on this is dull. So, yeah. um, now clearly they had to model new things. But if you look up at the uh, top of the play field, um, for the uh, the drop in lanes, uh, here they clearly did different modeling. Because um, here they have like screws on the top of them. This I'm not sure what is on the top of them. Yeah, right. Um, look at that spring thing. This is FX that we're looking at right now. The spring uh, on the launch lane. And then look at the FX2 version. It's just kind of like a weird tube. Yeah, like a muddy mess sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. You know, you can see some of the fidelity um, gets gets it's been bumped. better. Yeah, it gets bumped. Um mm. Butters does exactly what I was asking that <laughs> South Park does with the modes. Look, I re- I lit up margarine. There, who knows what you've lit up? But there's, <laughs> um, there's with all four or all five of them lit. Uh, so, but that it, it, that's that's a visual tell that lets you know how you're progressing. Um, that's right. Butters is a standard. Uh, shoot the sinkhole, then shoot the spinner, light the spinner 50 times, and then shoot the middle hole. That starts a mode. You can go through your modes. Um, it's a much more straightforward pinball. Um, I think it has a... Yeah, this a is definitely tighter. the better out of the two. Yeah. Um, and I think okay. a lot of people on the forums are saying that, like, this is the one they've been most excited to come back. Yeah. The actual South Park table, not so much. But this one, everyone's really happy to see this back, I think. Yeah. I'm curious... Uh, is that supposed to be Casa Bonita in the upper left corner with the balcony? And I know it's it's for the Deja Mexican uh, <laughs> the mode, but I don't know. I was kind of curious if anybody knows. Oh, right. It's for sure supposed to be Casa Bonita, um, especially now that Trey and Matt actually own it. Uh, okay, look at yeah, the I'm pinballs sure. down at the apron. So this is what I'm talking about, the chrome. This is FX. There's FX too. FX2, mm. I think it now. I granted, I think it's a baked in look on their pinballs, but the chrome yeah. really does look better in FX2, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, I think it's well, yeah, there's more, I guess, there's more uh, sort of shadows and environment reflected in the, like the pinballs, said, but I think I feel the, this the is being is, engine rendered. This isn't, yeah, that well, that's the thing. Yeah. Then the thing is the balls, because the balls are sitting in that tray and there's nothing really around them, then yeah, they're going to look pretty boring. But the ones that's actually on the play field, there's actually, there is stuff reflecting in them mm-hmm. real time. Yeah. Um, so they're going to look more realistic, I think. It's it's funny. It's like baked in looks more realistic because it's got stuff on it that's really yes. visible. But, but the actual real time rendering when you're in game, it actually feels more convincing. Yeah. But as a screenshot, it doesn't look convincing. Um, also, look at the pop bumpers uh, with the foil. Again, this is yeah. FX. FX2, their FX looks way better. You can you can just tell, again, the fatality. Yeah, they, it looks, they look textured. They look like yeah. crumpled foil. There, it just kind of looks like a muddy lump. Yep. Of who knows what. Yeah, uh, that's right. But and, and then look at the saucer hole. This is FX2, the saucer hole up in the middle of the play field. Yep. And then here, that's a more nuanced look. And I actually, again, see, Butters, I prefer the whole look of this in FX compared to FX2. South Park, mm. kind of the opposite. So it's really kind of weird that there was um, there's yeah, some it's, it's going on there. It is odd. Yeah, it really is. Um, uh, the gameplay where the physics really play a part in this one, 
hitting the very target, which is on the very far right uh, of the table, um, much easier in... I shouldn't say much easier. Um, your aim goes where you think it should. Whereas in the FX2 version, it was basically learning where off the flipper it's going to go, but it didn't. your brain doesn't necessarily go, yeah, that makes sense. It was unnatural yes. to shoot it. Yeah. yeah. I found that like, because it's it's pretty important. You get extra ball off that thing if you get the spinner. Yeah. Because the spinner is the thing that selects what award you get mm-hmm. when you push the mm-hmm. very target back. So, yeah, it's a valuable shot to make. And, yeah, it, it's it feels much better in pinball FX than it did in FX3. Yeah. Um, it felt pretty luck-based in FX3. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, there's our look at those two tables. I'm... Uh... Very happy to have South Park back. Um, I, I mean, I have FX two. It's available to me, but I so rarely open up FX two. Yeah, it just feels like, oh yeah, South Park. Do I want to go in there? Because if I go in there, I'm wind up playing other things. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that's right. Um, yeah, Super you know, League. That's right. So it's nice to be scrolling down, and all of a sudden, it was like I got that nostalgia hit, which is. God, years ago when we first started talking about Zen, one of our complaints was that there's just no nostalgia. We didn't grow up with these tables. They don't have any kind Mm. of impact on us. Um, But when you consider how long ago South Park came out, again, 2017, so six years ago, in that time, all of a sudden here it's back, and I got the little nostalgia hit when I booted up, and it was like, Oh yeah, I remember. This is fun. Oh yes, this is why I like this one. You know, so um, yeah, that's right. I'm glad it's, it's back. I'm definitely glad it's back. Yeah, it's it's good to see them both back in. Definitely, Butters is the stronger of the two. But look, yeah. you get both when you buy them. So you know, you know, South Park, nice inclusion. I reckon if they did another lighting pass over it and made it not so blowing out, it, mm. it'd actually be alright. It wouldn't change the gameplay, no. which is Spellorama of Doom. But yes, um, it would at least look a bit more like. It would look in line with the other South Park table, which is Butters. Yeah. Um, so, and both of these are miles better than the Sega South Park table. <laughs> yes. That's, that thing is... Well, you know, the funny... As much <laughs> as I critique um, the South Park table being a Spellorama, the, the Stern South Park was absolutely a Spellorama as well. Like, you had to shoot each shot three times to light it, and it was basically a Spellorama without the letters. But and it, was it was also boring. just... Boring. Boring. One-shot table... And incredibly repetitive uh, yep. callouts, like yeah, really repetitive. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this one at least there's a good good variety of them. Um, like I said, I think my yep, only my, my only change that I would want to make would be on at least on easy change, <laughs> um, would be on South Park to make the kids light up so you actually know. Who, what on the table you have completed? Because um, once you've completed oh, yeah. one, I, I don't now. I don't know if that's what the South Park letters. That's what those light up for. Maybe I don't know. Mm. Um, I've long forgotten how those light up or why. Um, need to. I think that's one we actually might need to read the rules on to refamiliarize ourselves yeah. where the shots are. Because it's but been a while. Like I, I am going to have to do it. But visually, it makes so much more sense if each of the kids got lit up. For when you finish their yeah. spellorama of them, um, that would be handy. That then you know handy. what to go for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, enough of that. Let's talk about the one last bit of news. We don't really have a lot of information uh, regarding this, but Zen went and announced yet another collection of tables that they're going to be coming out with another partner. I believe it's called Game Night Volume One. Uh, which would lead you to believe there might be Volume 2 coming soon, too. Um, Jared, That's you actually... what they confirmed. Oh, yeah, they, they, did they confirm it? There's going to be multiple volumes of this coming out, so you're going to see a lot underneath that that category. Okay. Uh, so in, this is an in interesting the... uh, thing here. I don't have any of the information in front of me. Jared, I hope you do. <laughs> I've what, got, what, is I've this, got... what is this a pairing of? Okay, so you've got the Gloomhaven... Um, table, which if you've watched the uh, the recent Pimble Bites episode, you'll see a developer diary from uh, Deep on that. Not, not Deep, actually. Tom, uh, Thomas, Thomas Crofts. Crofts. Yeah, Thomas Crofts. So he's the guy behind that one, um, which 
I'm already looking forward to. Let's be let's be frank. Um, the so the other one is Exploding Kittens, which is a was a board game that was kickstarted. Um, it features the art of the oatmeal. Um, so if you're aware of the oatmeal, um, it, I've actually I actually just bought the game recently. Actually, the, the mm. actual card game. It's a card game based board game, um, and it's it's got. I'm going to be really excited for that one to see what they pull out as far as art goes because the oatmeal's got some really great art assets and they could really do some fun things in 3D with these. Uh, the third one is Terraforming Mars. Not a not a board game I'm familiar with. I mean, Gloomhaven's not one I'm familiar with either. Terraforming Mars uh, is uh, the third one that they've announced. So these tables are going to be out um, in 2024. So they've, they've announced them now, okay. but they're coming out in 2024. So these are all based on board games. Um, mm. Were these board games all coming from the same kind of company? Do we know if they're Embracer Group stuff? What do we know? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, but they, I think they are all from the same game company. Okay. Um, they're like they're, I think they're a large game producer these guys um makes me wish that, so uh, if, if they're going for unique art style or weird gameplay or whatever i know that we did a uh, kickstarter for a game called muffin time which was from the uh oh yeah as asdm movie is that what it is i don't know they're very you know they did um mind turtle and everybody do the flop and like these really absurdist uh things and the game is completely absurdist and once you started mentioning mm -hmm. that about exploding kittens i was like "Ooh, that would actually be really fun as a pinball machine with in terms of audio drops it's got a ton that you could use from and songs and stuff like that so that'd be kind of yeah interesting to see where it goes and then i and then my thought went "Ooh, maybe we'll get a warhammer table <laughs> or a proper dungeons and dragons table i don't know so the the company behind it is Asmodi. Um, okay. They're actually a French. They're a French publisher of board games. Okay. They've been around since 1995, apparently. So um, they 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 have their own range of games, but they also do smaller um, game dips as well. Which is why I think Exploding Kittens might have been picked up by them because it was a kickstarted um, game. Okay. Um, but Asmodi also have Asmodi Digital as well. Um, so they've got a digital arm, um, to them as well, from what I can see. Um, and as Modi digital, um, well, as the name would, uh, would suggest is that that's where you see Gloomhaven. Okay. Um, and there's, there's other ones on there too. So terraforming Mars is one, um, there's also Lord of the Rings adventure card game, <laughs> um, they're also the ones that do Catan as well. Oh, uh, and on. game and a Game of Thrones as well. So yeah. they've got those are the properties. So this is interesting. The whole Lord of the that Rings is. thing, right? That is because mm. I know Very Lord of the Rings got bought by Embracer for correct. Uh, yeah, not the movies. But so that the... that might be how we see Lord of the Rings come to pinball effects. Hmm. So yeah, this is this is the very interesting thing. But yeah, as Modi as a um, as, as a, a company, have got so many titles. Yeah. Um, a lot of them they they have they also have titles for uh, all ages as well. So their their IPs, uh, there's a lot. So um, some of them seem to be, um, uh, yeah, they they got Ticket to Ride, Catan. Um, and uh, they've also got Arkham Horror, which I've not heard of before. Um, but those are the ones that are really like got a lot of IPs. So, you know, I think makes sense for be... that uh, kind of partnership. Then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they. I think partnering with these guys unlocks a bunch of different possibilities for yeah. the studio. Yeah. Like it's massive, but All the right. fact that they've actually got like a dedicated digital arm, uh, you could, my prediction you know, right here and now would be that 
you, we're going to see those digital properties come into the the app probably first as yeah, well. Yeah, because if they already have digital digital assets that they can just mm -hmm. send over to Zen, that would eliminate so much of the work. It would speed up the development process yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. So right. that's my call. Um, so the good it. news there then is that uh, we've got all sorts of pinball coming down the pike, folks. Um, really the, interesting the, properties too. Yeah, the, like, the, the drought that we had suffered so long ago <laughs> does not seem to be uh, uh, being an issue anymore. I think 2024 is going to be a big year. Like it is, there's going to be a fire hose of content coming towards us from Zen in 2024 because they've Dude. got, you know, they've got all the ducks in a row now, right? They've yeah. got their their like their development team is is cut a few tables now, so they've got the whole you know from concept to execution thing down for their table producers. So now we're going to see the pace pick up, I think, and we're going to see much more content coming out. I mean, we kind of said the same thing was going to happen for this year uh, based off of Mel saying that we were going to get 24 tables in 2023. And they did deliver that. Um, like they're, I think they're, they're just about to get it. In fact, I think someone on the forum was saying there might be one more than 24 hmm. um, at the moment. So it's like, yeah, they, they've got there. Yeah, and obviously this was also all while launching on the consoles uh, pinball effects. Which is non-trivial right Let's so frank. now that you have the launches done um it can just be game game drops uh which game drops and yeah. and further optimizations to take advantage yeah. of the platforms like we got nvidia um the, a new nvidia specific um performance enhancement released uh nvidia reflex i think it is so for the rtx series cards you could take advantage of that now uh and it it actually improves performance in pinball mm. effects. Okay. So that's that's now certified for pinball effects now, which is great. Um, so, you know, we're starting to see these things coming into the platform now. They're looking at performance. They're looking yeah. at ways of optimizing and rendering. Okay. So stay tuned, I reckon. All right. Yep. Stay tuned indeed. Uh, we'll be back again uh, real soon, obviously. Uh, maybe next time we'll do some actual gameplay of these uh, tables. Hopefully, maybe Pinball FX or Pinball M will have officially dropped um, that we can uh, power through some of those. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, we never know what's going to be coming down because that would eliminate what Jared loves to talk about. The stuff and things. That's with right. The things so, we love. Until next time, folks. Bye bye. See you later.